guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. Today I've got this cute little treat box for you. It's a no adhesive bag in a box. And the bag is a little Stampin' Up medium clear envelope filled with candy. Just pop it right in the box and you're good to go. This is my project for today's color inspiration challenge over on the craft social. Every week we have a stamping game, either a live uh, coffee and a mystery card or a coffee and a mystery not a card or a stamping prompt like the color combination or maybe an inspiration in kitchen where you play along, make your project in accordance with the prompt, the challenge and share there are prizes involved and this week we're doing a color combination challenge it's kind of a tricky one it's granny apple green early espresso gorgeous grape it reminds me of coffee and wine and grapes maybe some fall leaves or flowers and we can't wait to see what you do with this color combination this is my project and we're going to start with early espresso cardstock the base for our project is six and a half by ten and a half this is our template Put a template in the project sheet for you at kitchentablestamper.com. Just click where it says project details. It'll take you to the blog. The project sheet is embedded under, or is clickable under the embedded video. So we've got six and a half by 10 early espresso and our simply scored tool. We're gonna pop this in on the six and a half inch side first. We're gonna score at two and a quarter and four and a quarter. We'll rotate to the 10 and a half inch side and score at two, four and a quarter, six and a quarter, and eight and a half. Now I'm gonna get a ruler and we're gonna score diagonal from the center square, from the corner out to the opposite point of the score line ahead. So it's gonna be like if you imagine from the first score line an X all the way down to the last score line, but you're not gonna score through this center. It's very simple. It's very simple to go from corner to corner if you just remember to skip when you get to the intersecting score line. So I've lined up my ruler here and here and now I'm going to score from the edge of the paper to the intersecting score line, stop, pick up my stylus, and then I'm gonna put my stylus on the intersecting score lines and score to the end of the paper. Then I'm gonna do the same on this side. So we'll line up the ruler at the end of the score line and at the end of the last score line. And then I'm gonna score up to the intersecting score line, skip, and then up to the end of the paper. Now let's work these score lines with the bone folder and we'll trim according to the template. All right, you do not have to burnish the diagonal scores. We're gonna go in and cut out the triangles. So the best way to do this, I think, is to start from your center square, cut up along the score to the first intersecting score, then stop. And then you're going to cut off this diagonal score and remove the triangle. Then, same thing, back it up, one score, cut all the way up to the intersecting score line and then cut off the diagonal and remove the triangle. Now hold on to this. We're going to use this to die cut our little bats. Rotate end over end. Let's do the same thing on the other side. All right, there's our triangles removed. Now we've got to liberate these tabs at either end. So it doesn't matter, both sides are the same. And hold the end and then cut down the score line. If you want to take out the score line, you can. 
Just want to stay nice and slim here and just remove the bulk. We're going to do the same thing. This score line and then we'll rotate end over end and do the same thing on this end. All right, we're making a bag in a box. So we've got the box. Let's work on the bag. Got a Stampin' Up! medium size um, clear envelope and my paper trimmer. I'm going to just cut off the adhesive tab. Now we've got a little bag. Let's put some candy in there. I found these peanut butter kisses at Dollar General and they're like the Mary Jane black and orange peanut butter kisses. They're very typical um, Halloween candy. And I don't know if I've got eight or so in there, I think. Put them in the bag. And then I kind of tuck the corners under to encourage the, the bag into a good shape to put inside the, the box. Let's tie it closed with some early espresso ribbon. This is the uh, faux suede early espresso ribbon. Just cinch the top of the bag nice and tight and make a big loopy bow. I think gifts should have big loopy bows. And we'll trim away from the spool. Now we've got our bag, we've got our box. Let's decorate the front of the box. I've got some gorgeous grape designer series paper. This is one and seven eighths by two and an eighth. We're gonna adhere it right to the front of the box here. Now we can go ahead and we can decorate the whole front of the box. And then this would fold flat. So if you do craft fairs or markets, you wanna make some treats ahead of time for a big event, but then transport them flat. You can just decorate the front of this and store it up. This is a no adhesive kind of box. We're gonna go ahead and put it together now. So we're gonna lift up our center tabs and then we're going to wrap the front diagonals toward the or the back diagonals toward the front the front diagonals toward the back and then you're going to take these double tabs on the side of the box tuck it in and then these double tabs on the side of the box and tuck them in and you'll tuck the front down the back down and there's your little box almost looks like a, a Chinese food takeout container you could put a little staple there if you wanted to but then it wouldn't be able to fold flat again now we just pop our treats in the box there we've got our adorable bag in a box let's get it decorated I've got a couple of die cut pieces that I did ahead of time here got granny apple green six by six designer series paper. And I cut this little banner using the stylish shapes dies. It's the wide banner, but the shorter of the two wider banners. And then I die cut some basic white cardstock with another banner. This banner is from the Scary Cute Bundle, the Scary Silhouettes dies. Let's get the Early Espresso ink, and I've got Cebu and Scary On from Scary Cute. We're gonna stamp that on our little banner. I love this sentiment. It's totally what sold me on the stamp set. I do not have anything as cute as Cebu and Scary On. There's our greeting. Now we're going to stamp our trick-or-treater on some basic white cardstock. I'm going to go, I really like the little Frankenstein trick-or-treater with this color combination, so I'm going to carry on with my little Frankie. Got my Stamparatus all set up. The plate is supported by the stamp case. I'm going to put my basic white cardstock under the magnet. And we're going to ink up with early espresso 
And to ensure that we get the best silhouette impression, we're gonna use the Stamparatus. That way, if it's fuzzy or it's not completely a nice black, dark, solid silhouette, we could ink and stamp again. I think this one looks really good. So I'm just going with the one coat this time. All right, well that has a second to dry. Let's go ahead and die cut our accessories. We're gonna do little bats and the moon. Those are also from our Scary Silhouettes dies. Got a little scrap of Parakeet Party and the triangles from our box. My machine's all set up for die cutting here. I've got one, two, and three. My scraps and dies. Here's a little moon. And I got a big bat and a little bat. Well, kind of a medium bat and a small bat. There is one bigger in this set. I love the little bats and moons as embellishments. Just use up your scraps and it adds so much detail to your project. There's our moon. And our two little bats. I'm gonna cut my Frankenstein. Got my little trick-or-treater here and I'm gonna cut them out. We have a little white border all the way around, a little outline. All right, there's our little trick-or-treater. And bats in the moon, our banners and sample. I'm gonna adhere the two banners together. Use a little bit of liquid glue here. I'm gonna audition. Just make sure I like the placement of them on the box. I'm not gluing it to the box just yet, but I like that placement, so I'll adhere that down. Then I'm gonna take these amazing adhesive backed seasonal sequins. They're kind of a Christmas product with the red and green. They're part of the candy cane suite. But I really do love this kind of um, cloudy white iridescent and the gold here. It's kind of a matte gold for Halloween projects. The red, gold, and white will go into Valentine's Day too. So just don't just look at them as embellishments for the candy cane sweep. You can do so much with this pack of self-adhesive sequins. I'm going to add two of these white ones. They have kind of an eerie, kind of a ghosty feel. And then I'm going to take my tiny attacher and I'm going to staple through the larger sequin. Just adds a lot of texture and kind of an anchor point for that banner. Now we can go ahead and glue them on the box. And remember, it's going to hang off the box a little bit. So don't put glue all the way to the very end. Now, my trick-or-treater and moon are gonna go on dimensionals, and because I've got an early espresso treat box and early espresso uh, stamped image, I'm gonna go ahead and use these black Stampin' Dimensionals. They come in a combo pack. You get a mini, two sheets of minis, and two sheets of the regular size Stampin' Dimensional. And I just think that it adds a nice finish when you're looking at the side of a project that's on a dark base like this. You don't see those white bump up dimensionals from the side. Just a nice way to finish a project. Our little trick-or-treater, his head's going to go off the top of the box by just a tiny bit, so keep that in mind with your adhesive placement. And his feet are going to go over the banner, so add adhesive as is appropriate. Now, my bats don't really have a, a body, like a center body, like sometimes the butterflies do. So I'm just gonna kind of bend up the wings a little bit anyway and add a dot of glue at the center of my bat. I'll add one on the banner. And then we'll add one on the background. And for this little guy, I'm gonna kind of fold up one wing and then just wipe a little bit of glue on the other wing kind of at the center and put it on the box. I like the fun little lingo like they're flying away. 
almost done. One more touch. I'm going to add some Wink of Stella to my moon. Kind of got a moon that looks like a green cheese. Let's add a little bit of a shimmer effect by brushing over with the clear Wink of Stella. It's going to, don't be surprised when you add the Wink of Stella over the cardstock. It's going to wet the cardstock so it's going to look a little bit darker. Maybe the camera's picking up the difference. But when it dries, it'll dry back to that cardstock color. It'll keep the integrity of the Parakeet Party cardstock, but it'll have a soft shimmer over it. There it is. Same boo and scary on our Halloween bag in a box. And my project for the kitchen table stamper is color inspiration color challenge. All right, you guys, we'd love to see what you do with the color challenge. The link to our craft social is below the video if you're watching on YouTube. And it's in the blog post if you're um, on the blog. Come and join us in the craft social. We have a lot of fun um, crafting together. If you've got any questions about the color challenge, the craft social, the project, you can email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. And to shop Stampin' Up! 24-7, buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net. Thanks for watching.